we take a look at my saw bench here, you can see the rip fence extends beyond the centre of the blade. Now that's considered very dangerous because there's an increased risk of kickback. What I'm going to do today is to build a simple short rip fence that anyone can make. Looking closely at this fence, you can see there are two holes here for mounting such an attachment like this. Mine's going to be made from solid timber and a bit of MDF. I've got two MDF strips and this timber section is equal to the thickness and the height of the rip fence minus the thickness of the MDF. This first groove I'm going to cut will see this M6 sliding nut. As you can see that will just about slip in there and slide quite nicely. mistake on it because I actually want three strips of MDF to make this. This taller one for the main fence there. What's the one on the back that create a T-slot here? And I've also decided to increase the thickness of this edge here with another bits of 6mm MDF. I would have used 12mm at the start to be honest, but I haven't got a lot here in the workshop and um, I was concerned it might affect the positioning of these grooves in here. I'm going to create my T slots by cutting a narrow slot through each bit of MDF here using a 7mm diameter cutter. I would use a quarter inch bit, but I broke that a while ago. I'm doing some several shallow passes because of the small diameter of the bit and it's a quarter inch shank as well. You 
can just see the T-shape there. One day I'll get my dust extraction sorted. Got the hole cut, so you can get the hose connected. To clean up this low edge, I'm going to make a very fine cut on my saw. slots to slide them over the sliding nuts like so. There's a bit of sawdust in there first of all so it's maybe a bit tricky the first time. set this the way you want it and just lock it off the two knobs and hold it securely in place. Now with the rip fence in this position I'll have a tall fence with good support for a thick workpiece like this. But if we bring the fence in closer for a narrow rip cut, there's not a lot of room here between the guard and the fence. I like to use my guard, okay? Most likely you can push things but there's not a lot of room here to get it in there. And also I can't really see what I'm doing, so that's why I built this fence to be reversible. So you can slide it out of the way, loosen the nuts, slide the fence off the nuts, and then slip it 90 degrees and just put it back on this way. And simply, like, simply by turning that through at 90 degrees, and locking it off again. We have a low fence, allowing us to make narrow cuts close to the blade. We can see what we're doing better, but we can still get a push stick in there as well for safety. Now, I don't want to try and educate anyone in the art of sucking eggs, but um, this is how I was taught to set saw blade heights. The first thing you do is take your stock piece, offer it up to the blade, and then raise the blade. It's not easy on this saw because it's quite hard. It does need to go clean. What you're looking for is that the gullets of the teeth are just clear of the timber, like so. And that allows for the sawdust to be removed quite easily. And then what you do, you bring the fence over. Looking closely at the blade, you can see that the last cutting tooth is here, at this point. Beyond that, these teeth are doing nothing really, except clearing the sawdust. So, for safety's sake, we can set the rip fence back to that point because we know that's as far as it really needs to be. Anything beyond that is going to increase the risk of kickback. Now the danger with having a full length fence is that the risk of kickback is increased. What happens is there's natural, t natural stresses within the timber, whether it's hard or soft wood. And as you pass the board through the blade, you'll find sometimes that where the moisture content is imbalanced, uh, the timber will kind of try to separate and bow away from the cuts. So if this rip fence is back here, say, the end of the blade and if this wood wants to bow outwards this way it's going to press against the fence here which in turn is going to press that back against the back of the blade and as these teeth are coming upwards here it also points towards you so they're going to catch it and throw the timber back at you as it causes the kickback but with <laughs> with the rip fence in a better position like this set back there's more clearance here for the timber to do what it wants to do without any risk of binding or anything I've made this fence to fit my table saw. Of course, you can make the same thing for your round saw if you wanted to. Now, as you can see, this is several inches longer than the original fence. It doesn't have to be this long, but the beauty of this is I have an extra support for the infeed timber. If I was to make one modification to this, I think I'd incorporate somewhere to store this big spanner to change the blade. Because that's quite all good to have around, really, if you to hang it. Thank you for watching. I hope you found this useful. Please like and subscribe, and I'll see you soon.